What's up, it's Rowan here from Artist Light Education. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a weekly HSC Economics stats update. So in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna summarize for you the main news from around Australia and the world that you need to know for the HSC Economics course. I'm gonna share how it relates specifically to the syllabus and how you can use it in your essays and your analysis. So what I'm gonna do is save you a bucket load of time and help you upgrade the quality of your essay writing so that you can score that band six. So let's jump in and take a look at the main news from the last week. So the first thing is that the ABS released the national accounts. So the reference period is for March. They just came out at the beginning at June. Now, some interesting news here is the fact that the Australian economy is not really growing all that much. It grew by 0.1%. So if we go and take a look, we can see that year on year, okay, over the last year, it's only grown by 1.1%. And you can see that GDP has ground to a halt, right? 0.1 compared to 0.3 in the prior quarter. So why is this relevant? Well, if you're going to be analyzing the impact of economic policy, particularly monetary policy on the economy, you could argue that the increased cash rate is starting to have an impact on economic growth. It's starting to dampen growth. It's starting to hurt families through, uh, you know, particularly uh, the cash flow channel, i.e. with existing mortgages and increased mortgage costs. And therefore, you could argue that, you know, in keeping with, uh, you know, inflation coming down from, you know, highs of over 7% now to 3.6%, yes, it's still out of the range, but it shows uh, that while the cash rate increases are painful, they look to be working. And we can see that in terms of economic growth. Now, of course, this also highlights conflicts in the objectives, right? Of course, 1.1% is, you know, very low. Okay, um, and typically it's below how the economy would usually perform in a given year. And this is something that the second uh, news piece I want to highlight identifies. And this is an article by you know the one and only Ross Gittins, um, who's looking at the national accounts data with some analysis. And what he's highlighting is that you know what we can see here, okay, is that ultimately a normal year, you know year of growth would be about two point four percent. So at one point one, we're well below that, and it shows that uh, you know the RBA, in keeping as well as with a macro policy mix, with uh, you know the fact that you know the low to middle income tax offset was not extended, is having an impact, right? It's slowing economic growth. Now he brings up a bigger important point though that we've also had population growth during this time. So we've had population growth, you know, by 0.5% during the quarter and 2.5% over the year. So critically, real GDP per person has actually fallen by 0.4% during the year and by 1.3% over the entire year. I should say 0.4% during the quarter. Now, what this means is we're actually in a per capita recession. So even though 1.1% total economic growth, per capita, we're going backwards. And that's important because it means that uh, living standards are eroding on two fronts. One, population growth, you know, economy's not there, we're getting GDP per capita recession. And two, obviously with high levels of inflation at 3.6%, purchasing power is also eroding. So we've got this dual sort of situation of both purchasing power eroding, and we've got a situation whereby we've got a, a, you know, a GDP per capita recession. Um, and I think that's one of the critical things that uh, you know this heart you know really highlights. Okay, now at the end of the day, what Ross Gittins also highlights is that one of the main things that's driving our economic growth is you know consumption. Right, it accounts for more than half of total GDP. Okay, um, and you can see that at the moment it's been grinding to a halt. Okay, you know 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So we can see. Right, um, the impact that uh, the squeeze, the RBA's increases in the cash rate, um, is having on the economy. Now, what does this mean, though, in terms of big picture, uh, in terms of the cash rate? You know, will uh, monetary policy change its settings, given that uh, you know we're seeing an interest rate, um, you know, be very high, but we're also starting to see the inflation rate come down into the zone. It's not there yet. It's not two to three percent. You know, it's 3.6, and the RBA has said they still consider it to be too high, and they're concerned that it may still set in. What we can look at, though, is a couple of global announcements. Um, one in relation to, uh, you know, the, the Canadian and European um, cash rates. Um, and what we can see here is that in both Canada and in Europe, um, the cash rates were dropped, okay? So in other words, it's, they've begun easing the cycle. So the peak cash rate... Um, uh, has started to come back. Now, I think the thing to note, though, is that Canada and Europe had a cash rate that was higher than Australia's 4.35. So they went harder, 
um, and now they're starting to ease. But we can also see that inflation, okay, is if we look at inflation in Canada and inflation in Europe are also lower as a result than in Australia right now. So even though, uh, you know, one of the factors the RBA considers is global interest rate policy settings and how that may influence what we do here, we can sort of see that um, our inflation is still higher re relative to the rest of the globe. Our unemployment is still a lot lower, 6.2, 6.5 in Canada and Europe, Europe respectively, um, um, while our cash our cash rate is still lower ultimately. And so what these highlights is, you know, probably the reality that it's unlikely that Australia will yet follow suit, but it is starting to indicate, right, um, that maybe we're coming to, you know, the, the peak of the cycle in Australia as well. Um, now, this was followed at the same time uh, by the Fed in the US also um, basically maintaining the existing setting, right, 5.25 to 5.5% 5 .5 for their federal funds rate, their equivalent of the cash rate. And they've highlighted that they expect uh, maybe at least one rate cut coming um, in the back half of 2024. So what all this highlights is Australia's not there yet. As we can see when we compare to Canada and Europe, uh, our unemployment is lower, but our inflation is still much higher and their cash rates were higher than Australia's. Um, so in, in many respects, Australia is still dancing a very fine line. And you know you can probably highlight some of this in your analysis, right, around monetary policy effectiveness, that at the moment, our cash rate is lower, uh, you know, than the US, Europe, and Canada. Um, our unemployment rate, though, is also lower, um, but our inflation is still higher. And so it suggests that maybe if inflation does remain persistent, the RBA has not um, gone hard enough in their monetary policy setting um, in terms of the contractionary stance that they've taken. So there you have it. In under seven minutes, we've unpacked some of the key news from the domestic and global economy over the last week. Make sure you hit subscribe um, to stay up to date each week uh, with short, snappy updates on everything you need to know from around the world for the HSC Economics course to help you score that band six.